Okay, so I've taken off the aluminum seat and steering ring mount since it's not really useful and it's aluminum I can't weld to it. Uh, I am going to try and hack off this bar with these pipe mounts and this right here so I can put some more metal on this and make it a little bit longer using uh, this guy right here. So, we'll uh, see how it goes. Oh my goodness, that took a while. So it's the next day. A little bit of rain. Nonetheless, I will be continuing work. Uh, it was raining super hard today. We had a bunch of flooding and stuff. But uh, now I can open the garage door and not have everything get soaked. So, I have a general layout here. Uh, move back a little bit. I think you can kind of see how that'll set up. I have a couple pieces of metal here cut that I'm going to use to extend the frame. Um, as you can see, it looks like the back wheels will be a little bit wide. It will be kind of a long frame. Uh, I have it so when I sit down, my legs are barely bent to touch where the pedals would be, right about here. Um, I could move the pedals up, like up here, but that would conflict with the uh, steering, um, the steering tie rods, so I wouldn't really be able to do that actually. Okay, so what I'm going to do, what I plan on doing, is since I cut off that, and I have two pieces 26 inches long, since that seemed to be about the right length as you can see here, that'll give me plenty of length. And also, I have to take into account the, the caliper because I don't want to make the frame too short, or else the caliper will um, won't fit. Because if it's you know too short in the back, um, the reason why I cut this entire thing off is because uh, well, I originally cut it off back here and then wanted to hack off all this, and then I figured you know it's easier to cut it right there and remove all of that junk and just uh, add more metal on. So I think that's what I'm going to try to do today, right now, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Okay, so I have my camera mounted on this tripod, and now what I'm going to do is grind down the ends of this so I can make a nice weldable surface. Okay, both uh, pieces are fully welded on, so I just, it's like 11 o'clock, I just finished up this weld real quick in like 10 minutes, kind of did that. That's pretty much it. Okay, so it's been a few days since I last made a video on this. I haven't gotten that much done, as you can see. I just got the uh, back piece mounted here, along with the axle on as well. Um, yesterday I actually did all that. I finally ground down the corners of here and remounted it, obviously, as you can see. It also got the axle going. It actually wasn't that easy. It took a bit longer than you might think. I was out here working most of the day. I had to uh, cut this joint here and re-weld it actually a couple times since it wasn't, it wasn't being straight for some reason. I eventually got it to be straight by using a piece of that angled steel right there and clamping it all up and down that side of the frame to make it nice and straight. Um, but now, it is nice and straight. 
no bend in that. It's pretty good. So, after cutting and rewelding this joint here, since that was also giving me issues, I decided that it would be okay to mount the axle. So, now that the axle's mounted, I can move on to other stuff, except not yet because I don't have the sprocket yet. Uh, I ordered a sprocket yesterday along with a hub and two wheels. If you're wondering why the axle's on top, it's because the rear wheels are actually kind of large. I had to get uh, the smallest ones I could find were 16 inch in diameter. So, clearly that's kind of a big wheel, and since I'm going to have 16 inches on the back and about 10 inches in the front, like those, you know, obviously if I mounted the axle on bottom of the frame, that would make the frame tip forwards quite a bit. So I decided to mount the axle on top, which would prevent that from happening. So now the frame will tip forwards maybe an inch or so, which is, you know, that's barely anything, which solves that problem. So right now um, I'm waiting on the sprocket and hub to arrive so I can mount the engine. Uh, unfortunately, it seems like I can't do anything else until I do that because in order to mount the seat there, I have to have the engine in place, you know, to get a good reference point of where I want the driver to be sitting so I don't, you know, put the seat too far back or something. And in order to put the steering in, I have to have the seat mounted so I know where to, uh, you know, where to line up the steering and everything so it's not misaligned to the driver. So pretty much to make any more progress, I'm waiting on the sprocket to come in so I can line up the engine. Uh, so, you know, that's pretty much what I'm doing now. The sprocket's going to be a 54 tooth. So, with uh, a 9 tooth gear right there to a 54 tooth, that is, uh, let's see, 6 to 1. So, 6 revolutions of that assuming that a torque converter is a one-to-one -one ratio at 3600 RPM, which it might be a little bit more than that, um, will end up being with wheels with a uh, circumference of about four feet. This thing on the top speed of about 27 miles per hour, uh, so that will be a little bit faster, but not too fast. That's a decent top speed. Hopefully it won't wiggle around, be too uh, off-centered and everything, but... Uh, We'll see how it goes. Anywho, that pretty much concludes this update on this. Uh, I'll try including more actual in-progress reports on this, like filming while welding and everything, but uh, I didn't do that this time. But I will in the future. I will try to in the future when I get the uh, sprocket and hub, which will be in a couple days, I think.